let's actually go with so solving the order now can be done in two ways firstly uh, it's not always necessary that the uh, four of the five uh, sentences will form a passage so you mean, you know they may, that may confuse you but a way of solving this is that you put every uh, sentence into a theme and something that is outside the theme is the odd one out or if the question is such that it is easier to form a passage then you can do that and the odd one out is that but always go for the theme method first because uh, sometimes they make it easier to form a passage with the wrong sentences so that you get stuck uh, so in this uh, thing, uh, let's go ahead with this. Blue whales are repetitive vocalists, crooning their choruses at, a reg at regular intervals uh, for hours. So talking about blue whales, okay, about their voices. Uh, whale songs are like a fingerprint that allows us to track them as they move over thousands of kilometers. So songs are uh, they are able to track the uh, they're able to track location and movement through songs. Uh, nuances in these songs sometimes indicate the presence of new populations within a species across different regions. New populations and species. Blue whales are a species. Now, keeping that in mind, next sentence. Whale songs, again whale songs, can be used to differentiate between species, again species. Uh, now, coming to the fifth point, humpback whales are like jazz singers. They change their songs all the time. Humpback whales, similar. Uh, humpback whales are a species that have been talked about. Blue whales are a species that have been talked about. Then fourth uh, says that whale songs can be used to differentiate between species. Third sentence says that uh, songs sometimes indicate the presence of new populations within a species across different regions. But the second sentence says that it allows uh, the whale songs help us track movement. So this is a sentence that is outside the theme of the passage and therefore the odd one out. So this is an easier way to solve odd one out questions. I, I hope I was audible. Yeah, all right. Uh, go to the next slide. Yeah, as you can see, second is the answer. Next slide. So solving a para jumble, uh, firstly, you make mandatory pairs, whereas some sentence follows another sentence or has to be after or before a sentence. So you understand where one sentence is in relation to another. Uh, Anmol, if you could just look at the recording, that would be helpful. If you have a very specific question, I can answer that because we are running short on time. Um, I'm sorry for that. Uh, so uh, even if the words are too hard as vocabulary is too hard you can still uh, go ahead with and if you don't understand the exact meaning of the passage that is fine you just have to understand whether one sentence will come before or after the next so and which one is the starting uh, sentence in the parasample so the first sentence is a theory of ability can be reasonably expected to say what it is to have an ability in a way that vindicates the appearance of truth now this sentence went over my head but making it simpler a theory of ability can be expected to say something about experience, uh, appearance of truth, right? A theory of ability is what it's talking about, but it is quite an abrupt sentence to start with, but let's see. It can be a starter, not completely eliminating it. Second one, it is not an option, at least at the outset, to dismiss all our talk of ability as fiction or outright falsehood. Now, this does not seem to be the starter as it starts with it, means it has to refer to something probably before. So third, when we ascribe abilities, such as to compose a symphony. So an example. So when we ascribe abilities, we have the impression that we are making claims that are at least sometimes true. When I say that Kartika is good at VARC, I'm assuming that what I'm saying is at least sometimes true. So third is probably a good starter. Fourth says that the impression of truth exerts a pressure towards giving a philosophical theory of ability. Now, third one, the third sentence talks about an impression. And the fourth one follows that up, saying that the impression of truth exerts a pressure towards giving a philosophical theory of ability. A philosophical theory that explains why we are, uh, why this is supposed to be true. So we know that three and four are a mandatory pair. Now it is our job to see where one and two fit. Let's look at one again. A theory of ability can be reasonably expected to say something about appearance of truth. Now, one seems to be following four. Right? So one has to appear after four. Now let's look at two. So it has to be either three, four, one, two, or three, four, two, one. So one has to follow four. We understood that. Now let's look at two. It is not an option, at least at the outset, to dismiss all of all our talk of ability as fiction or outright falsehood. 
so came to be a concluding sentence so it cannot follow four so i mean it cannot uh, uh, conclude the passage so it can't be three four one two one is a sentence which explains uh, what the philosophical theory is supposed to do right and two is a contradictory statement so two has to appear before as one clarifies what the theory is supposed to do so it has to be three four and then two one because two cannot be the concluding statement in this paragraph so if you could go ahead yeah so in this there were not a lot of uh, complex uh, vocabulary however the ideas were quite complex so you have to remove all the words that are making the sentence gibberish and try to just understand the core so that you understand whether one sentence has to be before or after the next one uh, next uh, question please yeah moving to para summary so i would suggest you to attempt para summary after the rcs because para summaries uh, when you are attempt attempting these questions the uh, mindset is similar you are eliminating options rather than selecting the right one so uh, many identities can appear to be appear to be unstable houses can fall apart eggs can break plants can die etc however these identities are not unstable so they can appear to be unstable they are not unstable these objects are simply being affected by causality and are changing based on their identities therefore identity needs to be explained based on the entities building blocks so and, and how those interact with one another okay so we need to explain identity using building blocks instead of uh, whether they can uh, break or uh, all that which makes them appear to be unstable so in other words the identity of an entity is some of its parts essentially what uh, the building blocks are one can describe a house by describing how different so this these are just examples after this right how the different parts of wood glass metal interact with one another in a specific way to form the house or one can define a house's identity based on the formation of items atoms so you can break it down how much ever you want basic point being the identity should be explained based on the building blocks right they can seem to be unstable but they are not because they are being affected by causality that's it now moving to the first option identities can seem unstable right when things break but their identities merely changing owing to causality therefore identity of thing needs to be explained as some of its parts or atoms interacting in a specific way to form that identity this makes sense but we'll keep it we'll not eliminate it here many identities despite seeming unstable so my first red flag is many identities despite seeming unstable are usually not so right this uh, this is an illusion created by the causes that affect them causality they are best described as the sum of their parts to avoid this anomaly avoid this anomaly the anomaly being that uh, they feel, they seem they appear to be unstable when they are not right this is a confusing option so we'll keep it for now we'll eliminate it or uh, select it later third one being many identities seem unstable and are transformed because of causal flow to avoid this discrepancy of observation the best way to elaborate elaborate not describe elaborate any identity should describe it as some of its parts interacting in a specific way right now uh one second i'm not able to see the screen yeah yeah i can see the screen yeah so identity seem to be unstable that transformed by because of causal flow to avoid this discrepancy of observation the best way to elaborate any identity is to describe it as some of its part interacting in a specific way so instead of sum s u m is literally s o m e so you can get confused here it's a very simple small observation but you can get confused and because of that you may mark this as the right answer so this is definitely the wrong answer the test setter has made it pretty obvious d many identities though appearing to be unstable are usually not so they are simply being changed under the influence of some cause that affects them Hence, it's best if we explain the identity of an object, some of us that interact uniquely among themselves. I mean, this does not seem to be accurately uh, defining or uh, summarizing this whole thing, because they are saying many entities, though appearing to be unstable, 
are uh, usually not so. Usually not so. They are not so. That's what is written here. They are not stable. They are not unstable. It's not that sometimes they are unstable, sometimes they are not. They are clearly not unstable, but they can appear to be unstable. And I think this is the same point of contention in option B as well. Many identities, despite seeming unstable, are usually not so. This is an illusion created by the causes, blah, blah, blah. They are not unstable, but here it's written they're usually not unstable. It means they can be unstable as well. So this is giving a wrong inference. So A seems to be most accurately summarizing the passage. Therefore, uh, A is the answer. <laughs>